Nearly 450 members of the Democratic National Committee are meeting at the end of the month to elect a new chair. Right now, it looks like it will be a battle between the party's two polls, with progressives like Bernie Sanders supporting Minnesota Congressman Keith Ellison and Obama administration alums backing former Labor Secretary Tom Perez. But they're not the only ones running. Jamie Harrison is 40 years old, a former Washington lobbyist, and is currently the Democratic Party chairman for South Carolina, and he joins us now. Jamie, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Elaine. Uh, let me first of all get your reaction to this decision by the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, uh, essentially keeping in place this temporary restraining order on President Trump's travel ban. It's a win for America. Uh, I sent out a tweet earlier tonight that basically after uh, President Trump sent out his tweet, I said, well, you know, the American people, the Constitution, and all of the judges that you hate will all see you in court as well. Uh, you know, this, this is just a sad time in, in this country. It, it, we are seeing attempts to build walls, attempts to restrict people because of their religion, uh, attempts to censor the media. And that's not who America is. That is not what we are. And so it's good to see that the courts are standing up to him. As you see here, though, he says that this is a national security issue. Well, there, there are national security issues all the time. That does not mean that our, the, the rights that we have under the Constitution uh, take a step back because of it. There's something in, in the Fifth and the Fourteenth Amendment, due process. Uh, that's something that is, that is very sacred to us. People need to understand that there are laws in this country and that the, the various uh, the branches of the government have to apply to those laws and have to follow those laws. He is not a king supreme. He's not an emperor supreme. So uh, it, just because he says it doesn't mean that it has to happen and it has to apply to the American people. We need to make sure that we maintain our status as a nation of laws. Do you think that this ongoing legal fight will bolster the Democratic Party at all? Oh, I think so. I think all of these fights. The American people did not want this. You know, there were three million more people who voted for somebody else other than Donald Trump. We did not subscribe to this. And I even think that some of the people who did vote for him are starting to see, uh, have a little buyer's remorse. All right, let's talk about uh, you, the fact that you supported Hillary Clinton in last year's election. And as someone who hopes to lead the DNC, help us understand why is it you think that she lost? Well, I really think it wasn't so much about uh, Secretary Clinton. And, you know, listen, she was definitely one of the most accomplished people uh, to ever run for, for the office. We all know that. But I think the, the roots of this loss go back to 2008 when we stopped investing in every state party. I mean, she lost by less than 77,000 votes in three states that have millions of, of citizens. That is not a, a message loss. It's not a messenger loss. That is a functional operational loss, meaning that the state parties in, in those states, had we did all of the work that we need to do, long-term cultivation of those parties, making sure that we had boots on the ground, not just a few months b before the election, but long-term, I think she would have won this election. So that's the lesson that we have to learn. We have to go back to the 50-state strategy. Mm, I, I want to go and put up a tweet actually, because earlier tonight Hillary Clinton tweeted a reaction essentially to the three-judge panel unanimously upholding that temporary restraining order that uh, essentially means President Trump's travel ban is on hold. This is what she tweeted, 3-0, in other words, those three judges uh, all unanimously voting to uphold the temporary restraining order. But here's what Kellyanne Conway, President Trump's White House counselor, tweeted in response. She retweeted Hillary Clinton's tweet, but then also said Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and Michigan. Yeah. This is what you're talking about. Yes, it is what I'm talking about. But if I were Kellyanne, I would just take a pause. I think she has some ethics things that she has to work out today, uh, you know, promoting Ivanka's uh, line. So maybe she needs to leave the White House and go work for Ivanka uh, in, in her shop. But should Hillary Clinton have gone out to Michigan? Should she have gone out and worked harder in those states that she lost? You know, you know I, I think there's a lot of regret that we all wish that we would have worked harder in each one of those states because we see now what the result is, that we have this guy. We have somebody like Kellyanne Conway at the White House. We have somebody like Steve Bannon and Jeff Sessions now at the Justice Department. So there is a lot of uh, frustration on the Democratic side in that we could have done more in order to prevent this from happening. Uh, so, you know, I, kudos to Secretary Clinton for sending that out. 
Hmm. Let me ask you about what we've been seeing on Capitol Hill. Democrats pushing back against President Trump's cabinet nominees. Do you think that's a good strategy? Is that really what the Democratic base wants to see, or do they want to see things getting done? No, that's exactly what they want to see. They do not want to compromise with somebody who, who you can't compromise with. I mean, right now, I, I was talking to some Republicans the other day, and they said, well, Democrats need to come to the table, and, and they need to work with Donald Trump. Well, coming to the table means that it, it, if they're already talking about billions of dollars of cuts to the safety net for so many working people and low-income people in this country, and by coming to the table, that means means, that, well, instead of a billion dollar in cuts, it'd be $500 million in cuts? No. If, if the people that we represent are the main course on the table, then no, we're not going to come to the table. We're not going to take part in that. We're going to utilize every tool in our toolkit in order to resist and push back against Donald Trump and the rubber stamp Congress. What do you think that the party should be focusing on? We've seen, for instance, the energy of those demonstrators who have voiced their opposition to President Trump. How does the Democratic Party harness some of that? And that's why I'm in this race. It's because Finally, we need someone at the DNC who understands how to build state parties, how to build capacity within the parties. So right now, it's good to have all those activists out there with all of that energy. But what is very, very important for the next DNC chair is to make sure that the parties, the state party and the DNC, has the capacity to, in, to harness all of that and direct that towards the elections in 2018 and 2020 and long term uh, in, in the years to come. What do you want to see change or hope to see change in the party by 2020 or even 2018? Well, one, I want to see new leadership. I, I, I want to see uh, younger younger folks stepping up, shouldering some of the, the burden of leading this party. I, I want to see new ideas. We need to fundamentally change the Democratic Party. We can't just be an organization that goes out and begs for votes every two or four years. We have to be a community organization that's going out into the grassroots, into the neighborhoods, helping people solve issues that they're dealing with now. That's what we were trying to do in South Carolina, and that's why I, I so desperately want to work to transform the DNC into that same type of organization. Let me ask you about President Obama. Democrats yeah. lost many House, Senate, and governor seats during President Obama's time in office, and he now says he wants to help rebuild the party. What do you think the former president's role should be? We need him. We need Secretary Clinton. We need Joe Biden. We need them to be ambassadors so that if I'm the DNC chair, then I can call up the president or I can call up the first lady and say, you know, Mr. President, I need you to contact A, B, C, and D, these candidates in these states, and encourage them to run for governor, encourage them to run for the United States Senate. And then I need you to also go and do an event in Wyoming or do an event in Idaho in order to uh, mobilize Democrats in areas where we really haven't spent a lot of time and energy. Help them build the capacity and energize their base. They have to be ambassadors of the party. We need them to be ambassadors of the party. And I think that's the role that he, uh, the Clintons, uh, I hope Bernie Sanders, will, all of them will, will play that role. All right, Jamie Harrison, thanks very much for Thank stopping you. by. I appreciate Thank you. it.